Hello. Okay. So I just did a video, but same location, just different sides because I'm realizing that the sun looks a little bit better on my skin over there. Hi, hello. Okay. If you're new here, my name is Aphrodite and this is Aphrodite's house. And today we're going to be talking about why some of us don't need friends. I get it. It's a harsh topic. Just hearing the name kind of sounds a little fucked up, but hear me out. We're going to get through this conversation together. Just breathe. I get it. So, a little disclaimer. This video is not for those who need an excuse to be in hermit mode, okay? Don't take my video and run with it and be like, well, another spiritualist understands that, like, I just need to be by myself. We're not doing that. This is not that. I'm going to start off by saying I made a TikTok the other day. Just, I'm just adjusting myself. I made a TikTok the other day, kind of sort of explaining myself a little. I don't think a lot of people got it, though, when I said I don't have friends. Um, and I don't. <laughs> um, I have the way that the people in my life work is I have my partner, who I love very much, who is a direct extension of me. We share a lot of energy that's a that's a conversation for another video um he's a direct extension of me um which makes him family i have people who i've known for a really long time who i trust with my life they are family my soul family my spiritual family um past life family and then i have people i know so people who i talk to but don't necessarily trust with my life clients um things of that nature so some of us don't need friends right um we go through some of us who have a much higher calling or have a lot of life lessons to learn we go through this period where we have a lot of friends a lot of people who we consider friends and then at some point they turn on us they abuse our trust they hurt us in ways that we did not believe were possible and then we get to a point in our spiritual journey where we are asked do you truly need people who you identify with as friends you have people who you either trust with your life or you don't you have people who your soul connects to or you don't People who I would classify as people who I know are people who I'm okay exchanging energy with, but after a while, I just need to be by myself. People who I consider myself to be family with, the constant energy exchange lifts me up. So even if I get to a point where I need space, it's not because I'm drained or tired or because their energy leaks off of mine or, you know, just any of that it's because my brain's done a lot today your brain's done a lot today we've had a lot of beautiful energy exchange and it's probably best to just let our bodies relax for a little bit let our physical bodies relax so our energetic bodies can 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 recharge for the next amazing thing that we've got going on here um friends when you are on the path of deep spiritual knowledge esoteric knowledge deep growth um being an actual practitioner practicing learning teaching requires us to go through these hills these extreme tests um these high highs and these low lows for the sake of understanding how life itself works how we are kind of being pumped to the system how the game is played if you will we are in a never-ending game of chess in the first couple of stages here where we have to learn to start calculating people's moves and learn how to respond accordingly. Um, and it's so funny. It's almost though the prize for winning the game of chess is free will, <laughs> like actual true free will. It's, I had a whole dream about like choices, you know, congratulations. You've won the game of life or whatever. Here's your options. You can have, your whole soul back and just be a being who is free and you don't have to abide by these rules anymore 
um, because you've won the game, you understand how the game is played. At this point, keeping you in the game is it's like the game is rigged. <laughs> you know? Or you can have all this money, stay in the game, realize how it's played and continue to play. But, you know, play from from um, a different standpoint. Now you've got money, status, wealth. What are you going to do with it? You know, you're playing from the other side now. You have choices and options. Don't think that because I'm saying you get to play from the other side that this inherently means that I'm saying now that you've got money and status you're evil and that you know how esoteric things work and how magic works and and, um, you have a deeper understanding of these things that you're you've joined forces that you have no business joining that's not what I'm saying at all it's more like congratulations now you've got money and status um your pain and suffering and deeper understanding and your commitment to yourself, your commitment to understanding how the world works, your commitment to understanding how you work, right? How everything kind of flows together, the ebbs and flows of everything. Your, 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 um, reward is this sort of freedom, but a different sort of freedom because you choose to stay here and continue to help others grow, but now you have money. So like you're in a better position to be able to do that. So, a lot of these people end up maybe writing a book or running a store or a chain of bottegas, bodegas, you know, whatever they um, want to do with their newfound freedom and understanding of this. Um, I applaud the practitioners who choose to stay in the game and go back and, and learn something new um, and continue to teach others. But when we go through these stages, some of us just don't need friends because the way that we would identify people as friends are the people who who hurt us the most, the people who teach us the harshest life lessons, which is why I've just started calling them people I know. (laughs) Um, A lot of these friends end up being life lessons, and a lot of the people who I've ever called my family have never, ever, ever hurt me in a way that is irredeemable. Um, I have never had someone who I have loved so much and trusted with my life that I've called family who has made me feel inadequate, like I couldn't do something or like I couldn't reach my goals. It was always the family I was born into that made me feel like I couldn't be myself or that I was crazy. (laughs) And then I found my community and they were like, yo, not alone. I promise you I'm going through the exact same thing. And I said, oh shit, family, 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 family. Right? And family doesn't always mean we talk 24 seven, we do everything together. Sometimes family is family. I'll see you at the cookout in six weeks. Shit, I got shit to do. You got shit to do. We got people to heal, you know? But with that being said, some of us just don't need to ident- to have people identified as our friends. We put ourselves in a very difficult situation when we do that. We don't need that constant exchange that comes with the title of someone being our friend. We need a deeper understanding of how relationships work and how your specific relationship with one individual is working. But I don't necessarily think that these are individuals who you need to call your friends. And I learned that a long time ago. I stopped calling people my friends. I stopped giving people this title. I stopped, you know, it used to be like, if you want to be my friend, you kind of have to work for it. You have to prove to me that we can have a friendship, that we can have this relationship. And now it's, I don't care for your friendship. I don't care to be your friend. Um, Here's how it's going to go. I'm either going to be someone who you know, who's going to be giving you the knowledge as it is, as it comes to me, as you need to hear it, plain and straight. I'm not interested in sugarcoating shit. I'm not interested in being the beautiful, spiritual friend with um, the six million crystals and the and the and the rituals in the woods and the um, and the wine bottles and the glasses and the ashes and the graveyard dirt. Okay. Um, I'm not that friend who's going to have all that and then be like, tee let me help you, you know, hex someone, like, you're not getting that shit from me, okay? I'm someone who you know, and I'll help you. I'll guide you. I'll give you the proper information. You can do with it what you will because, haha, <laughs> guess what? I will not be responsible for the foolishness you, you choose to unleash 
in this plane of existence, all right? I have my mission, <laughs> and it is not to take responsibility for you. Um, and then I have family, you know? Um, usually, with when it comes to my family, I'm the spiritual mama, uh, telling everyone what to do, because I think I know best, but let's be real, I don't all of the time, which is why we have family, right? Um, my boyfriend, who kind of is my spiritual father, believe it or not, he is the physical representation of Saturn. I'm gonna let you do with that information what you will. Um, physical representation of Saturn, which is quite literally needed as I'm a Pisces and I'm ruled by both Jupiter and Neptune. So heads in the clouds, but constantly wanting that expansion and growth, but not knowing how to get it because no really good time management skills or figuring things out or laying things down to paper. It's more like, I want it. I've seen it. I'm manifesting it. I'm going to get it. And then it's like, okay, but where's your tangible? You need something right here. Put it on paper, pen to paper, write the numbers down. It's got to be tangible. You have to read it. You have to see it, you know, more than just in here. Love that man love that man <laughs> physical representation of saturn um, big daddy time um so mom and pop and then friends who i consider to be like my little children's but also they teach me all the time so basically children right um i have an actual son who is an actual son he is ruled by the sign of leo and let me tell you he teaches me more about life every single day so i'm just I'm learning that the small intimate circle of people who you know truly does end up being your soul family, your soul tribe, and they change your life the most, whether they are consistently in it every day, they show up every six months, they show up once every three years, it doesn't matter. When you get together, it's a life lesson, it's a good time, the energy exchange is high versus the people who you know who you're kind of like, I can spend 45 minutes with you before I need to just get the fuck away from you. Like, this is beautiful but I'm done. Bye. Those are the people who you just need to keep over there. You don't need to call them your friends. These aren't Pokemon. You don't need to collect them all as you go. You're not special for knowing this person and that person and having a friend who's a fashion icon and having a friend who does this and this and this. You, that's someone you know, okay? It's someone you know. I mean, rip me to shreds. Come at me if you want to. Facts are facts. It's just someone you know. And a lot of people feel special by naming people they know. I don't give a fuck to do that. I just don't. Um, and a lot of us need to be in that situation where we just don't give a fuck. Life becomes so much easier when we accept the fact that we have big tasks to do. And it requires us to have small, intimate group of people by our side. You could be the most popular tarot reader on YouTube. You could be the most successful bodega owner where you live. And source will always tell you it's this, it's these five or it's these 10 or it's this 15. And you may all be spread out over the globe somewhere at one point, all on your different journeys, gaining knowledge so that you can come back together and teach each other. But it's always going to be these 10. It's always going to be these five. It's always going to be these 15 that are going to rock with you until you're in the grave. I'm not saying cradle to the grave because sometimes it's not cradle to the grave. Sometimes it's midlife to the grave, <laughs> but, but it's to the grave. Rock with you till the wheels fall off. I don't give a fuck what you're going through. I'm here for you. The energy exchange is good. Even when the mood is sad, the exchange is so good. The energy is so high that it's just healing to be in each other's presence. That is not a friend. That is family. That is your soul's family. That is where you are the most comfortable and all of your swords are laid down and your soul can breathe. That is family. So just think about that. Stop addressing your family as friends and stop addressing people who you know as friends, right? They're just people you know. All right, that's what I've got for you today. Thanks for watching my video. I either struck a nerve and hurt your feelings or what i said i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in the next one bye